have pages here whoever needs. Yeah, yeah, brother. Okay, open up the, the first, and if you have the Sefer, Kuf Yud Chet, it's still on the first page of the handouts that we give out. <laughs> Last week, in this beautiful piece from the Kluger, we were discussing how the fact that when we wake up in the morning, and I wake up to a mitzvah that I'm a Jew, that's waking up in the world, it doesn't bring me any simcha, it's problematic. Because in my mind, unfortunately, Simcha is only a reward. Being the Simcha is only a reward. I need to have a reason. I need to have done something to be privileged to taste Simcha. And that's a Galut. That's Galut. That's the, that's the, that's the, that's the Mamash, the... It's the Hezbeya. Yeah, it's like the definition of... In this, in, in this context, it's the definition of Galut. Galut means I have to have a reason for it to be, to be the Simcha. That it's not enough for me that I'm getting up, especially us, getting up as Jews in Eretz Yisrael. That's my mitziyut. <clears throat> I still think that I have to do a lot of things in order to earn that, that privilege of, being, of having happiness in my life. Coming back to Eretz Yisrael, part of it doesn't just mean that I have the privilege of doing mitzvahs in Eretz Yisrael. It means that I have the privilege of being besimcha in Eretz Yisrael <coughs> just because I'm here. The galut mentality doesn't let me do that. It still makes me think that that I have to do all these things to be rewarded the privilege of Simcha. And it's just not, it's just not it. It's not it. That Rav Kluger, Boker Tov saying, that Rav Kluger is saying is what we're in right now. We're working on this right now. When we're speaking about keeping on making Aliyah, that, that means our concepts of Galut and Geulah. Like you could take the boy out of Galut and you see, you cannot take Galut out of the boy. Like you really see that. That's what, he, that's what he means over here. And he says, that's what causes the lack of Shalom Ba'is. Because I don't even know how much any of you believe really what I said right now, or if how much I really believe this explanation to it. Because what, what did we just say right now about the concept of happiness? Like in a nutshell, what did we just say about Simcha? 
It is. <clears throat> it yeah. is. I think yesterday's year also the same question yeah. kept coming up, which is how do you define simcha? Is that shleim with that? That's what it is. I mean, I think we referenced the shir in the yesterday. Shlemu, shalom bayit, between your body and your soul. Now, today we're going to speak about, we're going to see this in a little bit of a, of a more uh, tachlis example. Why is it so hard to give ourselves compliments? Why are we able to give someone a compliment about something that, it could be we did the exact same thing, but we wouldn't give ourselves a compliment. But it's very easy for me to give someone else a compliment on the same exact thing that I might have done. Why is that? It's uh, humility. Let, let's say it's false humility. Why is it so difficult to give yourself a compliment? And we always expect more of ourselves. Great. Expect more of yourself and give yourself a compliment. What, what stops us? So he explains here that this non-shalom bayit between the body and the soul enables you to be able to give someone else a compliment because you're not dealing with their shalom between their neshama and guf. You de- you're dealing with your own milchama between your shalom and your guf, between your neshama and your guf. But when you don't have to worry about it with someone else, there's no problem. But as long as there's a war between the soul and the body over, is it stimming? Are we in harmony? Are we in unison? We don't even allow, we don't, we don't even know how to give ourselves compliments. Now, what you said is true, but that doesn't soter, you understand? It shouldn't contradict the ability for someone to give themselves a compliment. It's amazing. If, I, if we did an exercise right now, and I'd say, I want you to go around the room and each person give themselves a compliment. So the first reason why we'd be reluctant is probably because of humility. But let's say right now we'll just throw that outside the room, and here you can be the biggest ball guy in the world. It would still be hard. It would still be hard. Why? Because of this Indian that he's speaking about. Because the way we relate to even giving ourselves compliments is, to a certain effect, in galut. It's in, and we need to bring it into geula. And that's what we're going to try to do. So if you look at, uh, it's, on the, it's on the left-hand column, the word, na'aset neshama zo efet tamid. Do you see that? It's over here in, in the pages, if you have the pages. Na'aset neshama zo efet tamid. The neshama looks at what the body has enabled it to, to do in this world, or the little that the body has succeeded in doing holy things, and you can't give it a compliment. Why? I expect more of you. I expect perfection. I, I can't take any simcha in the small successes because they don't really mean that much to me. Because in light of the neshama's state of being just pure, it's not such a big success. It's nothing. So I'm going to be so hard on myself and not get too excited by small successes. The body is left as that deserted kid, that lo yutzlach. Lo yutzlach. You know what lo yutzlach is? <coughs> huh? Lo Yitzlach. Lo Yitzlach is like saying, like, ah, you didn't make it. You could have been a kibbutz, you didn't make it. I have a friend that some of us know in this room that when he, he, Davka, you know, sometimes when you get to sit in business class and you want to be a mensch, you go on plane last. Because you don't want all the people to pass you, people that know you. My brother once was upgraded, and one of his rebbein <laughs> in high school um, was on the plane, and he was like sitting, you know, going towards the end of the plane, and Whatever, they, they made all the business class people board first. So my brother's sitting there, he's like this, and suddenly he feels this hand on his shoulder. He's like, oh, Eitan, see? You know, it was worth it leaving the base major. It's like, 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 oh my God. I have another friend. I have another friend. Oh my God. He goes on the plane first, okay? Dafka, and he sits there, and he goes like this. He puts his feet up, he gets a drink. And he goes, he goes, lo yitzlach, lo yitzlach, lo yitzlach, lo yitzlach, lo yitzlach, lo yitzlach. Like 230, so that he could feel, because, yeah, and I, I actually called him my friend right now. That's a pretty weird yeah. thing, too. <laughs> like a Facebook friend? Or a Unfortunately friend? not. <laughs> Some of you guys know him. Anyway, now you're going to spend the rest of the year figuring out who that is. I think I know. Peter made that story a few uh, months ago about the guy who got upgraded to business class, and then yeah. he's sitting there feeling like such a yitzlach. 
and yeah. uh, he hears somebody. So he says, I want to see what business class looks like. And he peeks his head in and he sees that guy there. And he goes, oh, that guy? He's just a schlepper. <laughs> like, like the rest of us. Like the rest of us. <laughs> and like the guy's whole thing like came crumbling down. Like there he was, he was sitting there. And he said, no, this is like A lot of learning, a lot of learning on the plane. A lot of big <laughs> malachim happened on the plane. I once saw a big rub that it must be that, like a big, big rub. And back, I don't know how if it's like this anymore. Is there still first class on LL? Not business yeah, class. Old first, on the old place. first class, yeah, right? Yeah, how many seats? Like seven. They changed the pajamas well, and they. Uh, well, how many of them? Eight. eight. Eight, please. Yeah. You're sitting next to Adam. <laughs> it's eight, actually. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> that was so close. <laughs> so they're saying there was no one, it was only him in the first class. And he's sitting, but he, he didn't know what to do with himself. He, he wasn't. It was basically like probably one of the chassidim said, "This is the only way I'm willing to fly you out here." So he's sitting there. I remember seeing him. I get on the plane. He's sitting there. He he's like looking at everything, and he's so embarrassed about everything, and he's sitting there shaking, saying to Helen the whole time. And I was like, I wanted to go up to him and say, "You know, it's I could help you. I, you know, <laughs> you could, it's really I can make you feel so much more comfortable right now." Remember, I sat next to Rav Biederman. Well, no, not him. His brother. His brother. His brother of Biederman. I didn't know who it was. Yeah. Anyway, okay. So, let's go back in this. We, all, we got to this from the words Lo Yitzlach. My friends, <laughs> <laughs> comment to those going into cattle. It's really horrible. Anyway. Um, you look at your small successes in life, and they're never really worthy of ha'aracha. How do you say ha'aracha? Appreciation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not worthy of appreciation. Now look how wondrous this is. Yanik Reuven midim tovot larov, leshimon. I'll say it. Otan peolot shel sehu Reuven. Right? Reuven will compliment Shimon on the exact same things, peolot that Reuven has been able to do. Ve'afa pichen lo yuchal Reuven leshabach et atzmo al peolot eilen. But Reuven can never give himself the same machmaot, the same compliments. He doesn't even give an inner word of like Yeshakoyach inside to himself. Even though he could say the same exact thing and even more to someone else next to him. Why? Why is it like this? Where does it stem from? It's a, definitely a false sense of humility if you don't compliment yourself of being humble. <clears throat> There's no Indian like that. You're not saying to other people, look what I did. You're trying to give yourself koyach. No, 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 I won't do it. I won't do it. Why? If Kluger is saying that's galut, and he's going to explain why. Ki nishmat reuven eina mesuchsechet umitkotetet in gufo shel Shimon. You hear? The neshama of reuven doesn't have any shtiklach. He has no problems with the goof of Shimon. It's only us that have problems with our own bodies. The soul and the body can't get it together. It has enough strength to see in honor the efforts of him, your efforts. Wow, I could look at the, your efforts, your physical efforts, what it took you to overcome this midah, whatever it is, and I could lishabach it, I could praise it, and I have no problem praising it. <coughs> But to do to myself, I can't. It's, I'm not able to. Biram bina levena gufa sheba shochenet kayemet ktala ktata shel galut. Rav Kluger says, but we have a a ktata means you know we, we actually say this in the Avinu Malkeinu in that the Shliach Tzibur does on Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. We say Avinu Malkeinu. Um, what's the lashon there? It's right before uh, Birkat Kohanim and Musaf. Kalikol. Save us from ktata. Ktata literally means like a, like a, like a, this, but it means like a street fight even, like, you know, ktata. It's really what's, you know, reed is like a fight. Ktata is like this petty fight. It's quarrel. Quarrel, thank you. So he's saying, save me from those quarrels. So here we understand what this, what this lashon means. Save me from the quarrel that, that, that is taking place between my soul and my body. That my soul looks at the body and does not value and appreciate the hard work the body does just to be able to make it in life. For instance, 
Did any of you give yourself a, a shakayach that you got out of bed and came to shul this morning? No, because in light of what I really think I should, where I think I should be, where, in, in the light of the neshama, what's the big atzlacha that I made it to shul today? It's not such a big deal. But if I'd be able to be a, you know, live through the eyes of geula, I would have no problem l'shabach et atzmi. Like I look at you guys and I'm like, wow, each person here. Yishar koach, you probably went to bed really late. You probably had another morning of mishigas with the kids and you still made it to shul. No matter even what time, it doesn't matter, you made it, you made it to learn. I could say that to you. I am, I'm telling you right now, I don't say it to myself. Why? Because it's still this concept of galut over the mentality of how I view things and how I value things and how I appreciate things. He says, this is the galut that we live in right now. Um, משום כך לא ייתן ראובן אל ליבו להאיר פניו אל עצמו ולומר לנפשו אשראי ומה טוב חלקי שזכיתי לומר ברכה להשם ללמוד תורה, next page, לקיים מצווה, לתת צדקה, להתעסק לפרנסתי בנאמנות. Did any of you um, not steal anything last week? Did any of you not cheat on your taxes last week? I'm not talking about the week before, but last week? Probably because it's not, it's not, it wasn't tax, it's not really tax season yet, or it didn't happen yet, you have to give in the monthly divuchim. But can you, can you applaud yourself at all for things that if the body was working on its own, it would have for sure done or not done? Nothing. We don't do this. We're looking for someone else to give us compliments, make us feel good. Just so shallow. So petty, it's such a galdut way of living. A geuladik way of living is understanding the art, the holiness, the holiness of giving yourself a compliment. Of the holiness, not the possibility, but there's a kedusha to it. It's called being a redemptive person. And Rav Pluger says now that we're back in Eretz Yisrael, the ability to do this is much more approachable, it's much more feasible. That's a beautiful way of understanding Aliyah, coming back to Eretz Yisrael. It means that you really, if you want to say, I really want to leave Galut behind me, now we, now we have a little bit of a more of a, on a spiritual level what that really means. Now, skip the brackets here and go to He. Because now he's saying, okay, so where are we in life, okay? Et lehayir banefesh nitzotzei he'ara me'ageula ha'atida. What is it time for? Mama, she sounds like the biggest, you know, Zionist demagogue here. But we're talking about holy tzionot. You know, not, not, the, not, not what we got stuck with, right? You see what? You see what, where we got stuck? He's talking about a holy tzionot. Et lehayir banefesh nitzotzei ha'aram ha'gulat. You know what it's time for right now? To shine in our, in our souls sparks of the future redemption. Mi binyan beit ha-mikdash ha-shlishi. Third base of Mikdash. How? Al yedei p'tichat halev l'simchat chayim amitit u'pshuta. Opening your heart to simchas chayim, meaning shalom bayis, inside. Amitit u'pshuta. Simple and pure. What's an example? Give yourselves a yesher koach that you came to shul today. Give yourselves a yesher koach that you stayed to learn. Go there. Amititu pshuta, simple and real. Bal yimna yehudi atzmo mikach b'te'ana she'alei terem ba geula. Don't prevent yourself from going there by saying, "Listen, the geula didn't didn't come yet." So I, I you know, okay, when the Beis Hamikdash is here, I'll have the ability to give myself more compliments in a holy way and be okay with it. And don't say mitzvat galut hiliyot b'merirut atzmit. Think, don't, and and you, you think, we're, you know, they, this sounds funny, but there are people in their mind that hold that until the base of Megdash is here, the Indian is, how bitter can I really be? I have an idea. Save that for the nine days. Or, or just for Tisha B'av, even though, again, it's Nidcha again this year, so it's even less of an opportunity to feel that bitter. But what he's saying over here is, if you say you're a, in a holy way, Messianic Jew, you know, right? The tikkun of that whole Indian, so no one should... Online should misunderstand what I'm saying because I've been there before. If you manage that you have, you have, you're about the geula. That means live now, like a little bit of a taste of what it's going to be like. Okay, so what is it going to be like? Your neshama and your goof are going to live in harmony. 
that means that you're going to be able to give your body a yeshe koyach, as simple as it is. And that yeshe koyach is going to give you koyach to keep on going. You know, remember the Torah, it says, V'afal pi she'ispamea, im kol ze achake lo b'chol yom she'yavo. So when you change the kaf to the kuf, achake, so, meaning, until Mashiach comes, I could either wait for him, achake lo, or achake with a kuf means I'll emulate. Lechakot, with a kuf, means to like imitate, right? Mm-hmm. That means that my, my job until Mashiach comes is not just to be here and wait and to say, like Rav Kluger is saying, listen, I'm going to wait, and until he comes, I'm going to stay in the gullah's mindset of, I have to be so hard on myself and stay in the bitterness. It means I'm going to emulate. I have to kind of be a little Mashiach myself. <laughs> but here he's saying, don't worry about being Mashiach. Bring in right now to your experience of living in this world, especially us, 2019, living in Eretz Yisrael, what it's going to be like when Mashiach comes. Bring that to the surface now. Bring that to your avodah now. I think this is a very, very important piece. Mamash, crucial, critical, not simple. Not simple. We have a lot of oivim standing in the way of us being able to implement this. A lot of oivim. You could, you could find them throughout your day. What prevents you from doing this? Like right now, has anyone been able to do this to themselves while I'm talking? About giving themselves like a nice yeshir kayach? That they came to shul? No, why? I expect at least that, right? Really? With all the minias that are in the world and the tiredness of the body? It's, not a, it's, it's just like a simple little thing that you came to shul? Not a big deal? It's a big deal. Most Jewish people don't go to shul on Sunday mornings. Maybe there's also a lot of Orthodox people who don't go to shul on Sunday mornings. You do. Find the voice that prevents you from being able to give yourself your shakaya. You have a chance of smacking the daylights out of gullus in your life. Look for that voice. When it says that your benefesh needs to say haram atidit, that's beautiful. Is there like a practical etza here? Like, what does that actually mean to bring the sparks of life of the future gula into our life? Then? Like, what does that really mean if we were to try to do that? Okay, I love you, but I said it like 30 times. I'll say it again right now. Okay. Can you give yourself a yesher koch that you showed up in shul this morning and sat and learned learning with Yidin? Can you give yourself a yesher koch? He can. He can. <laughs> He's there. He's there. He's there. He's there. He's there. He's there. And you know what? And if any of us, if any of us here, if we have to say, who's like a real geula kind of here? They would say. They would say, like you. I'm like, dude, three mountaintops. I right. I through Wadi Nis until I got to the shul. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, can you give us a mishikach that every night you've, put, you've chosen to put your family in danger by living on a deserted mountaintop in Judea? Okay, so that's the hand. He's looking for extra credit. He's look, you're just looking right. <laughs> this is what we're speaking about. You're saying, like, can we get tachlis, you know... No, that is tachlis. This is the, he's, he's trying to be as practical as possible. He's, he'll, he'll, he'll develop this even further. We're it just, just sounded so after me. Beit Hamidash it was just very, you bit it very, like... Okay, compliment you. Listen, the complimenting yourself is one shita that we're speaking about. It's, it's touching on a much bigger concept of living in peace with your body. That, that's what this whole ma'amar has been. Having shalom bias inside. That's really what he's speaking about. It's saying, you know, invite nitzotzei or of the gulash. He's saying that means simcha chayim. Shalom bias between the neshama and the guf. Now we can keep on coming up with a million examples to try to understand what that means, but he gave one example. But there, there are other examples as well that we can come up with. It's, a, it's, a, it's kind of like Samach B'chalkah, in a way. You know, Absolutely. The Chalik is whatever I'm able to do. You know, not in what's given to me or what I have, but whatever I'm able to do. And, and, well, and Simcha, like this <laughs> Simcha over the little Chalik will open the gates for another chilek we were yeah. meaning it's... Right, once you start appreciating what you can do, and right. what you do theoretically, right. you appreciate it more. Nechon, Nechon, Nechon. Nechon. Okay. Um, let's continue. 
אגן, בל ימנע יהודי עצמו מכך בטענה שהרי טרם באה גאולה ומצוות הגלות היא להיות במרירות עצמית. כי חיים לאורה של הגאולה מתקרבת ובאה, he sings so beautiful. What does it mean to live life in light of the geula that's coming? Listen to these words, it's so beautiful. שהיא הערה, הרי הם כתוספס שבס. He's talking to the gullus here that's, remember, I, I, I'll explain this to you in a very painful way. I was in Newark airport, when we went back to the airports for some reason. I was in Newark airport and I landed from Israel a while ago, like six, seven years ago. I landed from Israel and I had to then catch a connecting flight to um, Albany, tiny airport, Albany, New York, upstate New York. I get to Albany. I, I'm sorry, I'm in the airport. <coughs> the flight, there's a thunderstorm flight. It was actually Pasha's Babaska. <coughs> Flights delayed, delayed. I'm sitting there for hours, hours. I, there's my diet, Dr. Pepper, uh, addictive days. I chugged down like seven of them. I found a stand. I kept on going back, having one after the other. And suddenly this Rasta, who, Mamish, Einav Ka'avatichim, which means he was having a very nice, fun time on his uh, Mishmeret. <laughs> His eyes were mamish popping out. He, he, he basically said stuff that he wouldn't normally say to people, but he looked at me and he says, Bro, can you lift up the skull cap? I want to see if it's there. Never happened before, but he said it with like chen, checking to see if I have horns. It was like a very weird thing. Mm -hmm. I'm like, bro, you really think that's... Like, I wasn't offended at all, because honestly, he was so stoned. I didn't I think it was like anything real, like that he was, like it was coming from a real place. I'm like, bro, you really think that it's a real thing? He's like, it's not? I'm like, no, and we laughed at it. And we actually had a, like, a fun conversation about, uh, I don't even know what, what it was, it was fine. A minute later, and I don't see a yid the whole day, at least someone that I, that I know is a yid. A minute later, they announced everyone, okay, flights are all back. So everyone's charging to their gates. I'm going to my gate to uh, Albany. And the night next to me was a, was a plane to Charlotte, a, a plane going to Charlotte. And I happened to come across a yid like this. Right, a yid, mamash, from a yid. It's Pasha's Baaloscha. It's between Baaloscha and Shlach, I think. And I say to him, uh, oh, Shalom Aleichem, nice to meet a yid like here. I've been all day so lonely. He's like, Shalom Aleichem, not exactly the warmest. Shalom Aleichem, why do you give me Shalom Aleichem? I say, where, where do you live? Um, he tells me where he lives. I'm not going to mention names. He says, where do you live? I said, I, uh, I, live, in, I live in Eretz Yisrael. So I live in Ephra, I live in, I was living in Eved Daniel, I live in Gush Etzion. So he says to me, and I forget this, he says, wow, I wish, uh, I felt like I was on the level to do what you're doing. So he said to me, I said, what are you talking about? You wish you were on the level to, like Kilo was saying to me, you're so pompous. You think you could be on the level to do what you're doing, which is what? Living in Eretz Yisrael. I said, what are you talking about? He's like, we, we can't, uh, you know, we're, not, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. You think you're there yet. Good, good for you. You think you're there. We're, the the Olam's not there yet. The Olam is So I said to him, I said to him, you know what's so sad? I waited to meet a Yidla all day long today. This stoned Rastafarian you see over there, I feel closer to him right now <clears throat> than I do to you. Because you sound like the Miraglim. Next shot is. You sound like the Miraglim. I never told you guys this story? Mm, you yeah. sound like them. I, I told you years ago, probably, after it happened. You can tell you're getting in it again. You? Why? Because what did he say right now? He said, a Jew has to realize that right now, yes, Mashiach's not here. In the time of Mashiach, there will be peace between the body and the neshama. You'll be able to compliment your neshama on small achievements because it doesn't contradict mm. the bigger picture. Ah, what, what, what holds me back is that I'm saying, no, no, I'm not in a messianic world yet. I don't live there yet. So I'm, I, I have to be in the bitterness until the, until the gold comes, right? He's saying, you have to view our lives that we're living in right now. It's not Shabbos yet. But what do we do? Especially, we do it every Shabbos here. Tosefet Shabbos. I have to send out a beautiful piece that, that I learned last, on this past week's parasha, where Shabbat is clearly the etzim of all, all simcha. Any simcha that you experience during the week is drawn from the well that you pulled from on the Shabbos before. Right, because on this. Shabbos we say, Tchila lemikra yekodesh. That whatever good is going to happen, holiness, during the week, it's Tchila, it's called out on Shabbos. What all these examples of Shabbat? I did all of them. 
Nachon. So here, the concept is Tosefet Shabbos. So we add on Shabbos to... It's not Shabbos yet. How do I do Tosefet Shabbos on a spiritual level? One of the examples is giving myself a Yeshe Koach. Shehi he'arat Shabbat el toch yom shishi be'odeno be'itzumo. It's adding on to Shabbos in, in Friday. It's still Friday, but I'm bringing Shabbos in early. Kayam betochenu kocham shel tzadikim agdolim me'oro shel Mashiach להשקותו כבר עתה אל נשמות ישראל, אף כי תרם יפציע שחר גאולה, ועדיין גלות קיימת. Yes, Rav Kluger is saying. The galut still exists. It does. There's a reality. It's called, it's called galut. Mashiach is not here. We're not back, we're not all back home yet. A Jew still can't daven on Harabite. Mashiach's not here yet. Don't start saying Mashiach's here. But, who says that you can't do what he just said right now? And bring in this dawn, you know, and end, end the night, bring in the dawn a little bit earlier. Privately, on the Neshama Dik level. He's saying, this is what the Baal Shem Tov did. Or a Baal Shem Tov HaKadosh, the light of the Baal Shem Tov. Or Oshel Mashiach, this is the light of Mashiach. Kvi she katav be'igeret kotsho hanod'a, ma she'amar lo Mashiach, like he wrote in his famous, uh, how do you say it in English? E-P-I-S, epistle. Like he wrote, in the famous letter that he wrote, שגילוי הגאולה תהה בהתגלות אור החסידות. אימתי כה תימר, לכי אף משיח, when will משיח come? לכשיפוצו מיינתך החוצה, when your wellsprings will spread forth. That's why חסידות, the whole thing is spread it out. Why? Because I want to bring משיח, that's what the Baal Shem Tov, we believe that's what משיח told the Baal Shem Tov. I ever tell you Boaz's chidush? Boaz should have a refuel שלמה? I think I told you this, Boaz had a great chidush. I don't know if it was his, but he said, Baal Shem Tov asked Mashiach in, in Aramaic, E matai ka'atimar. And the Mashiach answered him in Hebrew, not in Aramaic. Mm-hmm. It's a gewalt, no? It's beautiful. Wow, we're becoming so Zionist here. What's going on in here? It's amazing. <laughs> Those that carry the vessel of Baal Shem Tov. Hello, hey, my you guys. Talmida ve talmidehem shebechol dor. His students and his students, students in every generation. Nos'im bekanfehem et ha-besorah ha-gdola l'Yisrael, Ari and Jeremy, they care, they... Mamash, what you guys are doing, and I'm saying this on a very simple level, I know Jeremy has no problem with compliments, Ari, you, take it in, you, you carry on their wings this besorah gdola, this great besorah for Am Yisrael, shekvar yesh bekocham lichyot betocha galut kavei or mitnotetzut ha-geula. That in galut, you can already live on these like lines of geulah. <laughs> to enliven your souls with the light of Hashem. Limdo b'sfarim akdoshim shekayom be'ikvet ad meshicha. What's today? Is, what, like on, on the level of geulah, what day of the week is it right now? Friday. When on Friday? Ben Hashmashot. So you're going to wait for Shabbos to come or you're going to do Tosef at Shabbos? That's what he's saying. Kasher omdim b'fchinat erev Shabbat le'achar chatzot. Yesh le neshama le'akir. You know, on Friday afternoon after chatzot, it's already things change over already. There's certain inyanim people take on. Like hamotzi, not to do. Eating meat, not to do. All these different inyanim because it's already there. It's not there yet, but it's already there. ערב שבת לאחר החצות, יש לה נשמה להכיר כבר בעוז מעלתה ובעוצם ערכה. You know what it's time for on Friday afternoon, ערב שבת? It's, it's time for you to recognize how powerful your נשמה is and how, and how valuable it is. דייקה ביותה תוך גוף זה שבה נתונה. דווקא, while it's still in a goof. You see, שבת, it's like יום עד הנשמסה. I'm fully just in a, on a soul level. Erev Shabbos, I'm already tasting much more of the soul, but I'm still fully aware and conscious of my body and all the physical stuff I have to get together. So the Avodah Davka is now. It's not when Mashiach comes. It's Davka now, before Mashiach comes. Yesh ki yesh li yudi lichyot behirut she'ein lemala himena. It's on a Jew to live with this, with this clarity that has not, nothing higher than it. שהחיים האלה כדמותם וכצלמם הם אלה שבהם חפץ השם. Say that line again, important line. שהחיים האלה, this life that was given to you right now, 
You were born into a world before Mashiach is here. You were born into Friday afternoon. You were born a neshama in a body before Mashiach is here, before the Beis HaMikdash is here. This is the exact life Hashem wants you to have right now. What, what kind of chizuk do you get from those words when he says this? That this is exactly what Hashem designed for you to have right now. What does it do to you? It's amazing. It's like, it's like if we say in the, in the brachas before Shachas, right? The guy's going to take it away and give it back. But in Shemar Esra, we say Mechayim Mason. Now, right? This is Tchiyas Mason. It just yeah. blows me away. Yeah. It's right now. Like we always say, what Hashem really wants is when things will be perfect. Like that's what Hashem really wants, a, a perfect, like, perfect deal. And he's saying over here, Achayim ha'ele, kidmutam ha'kitzalman, hem ele shebaim chafetz Hashem, Friday afternoon, tug war between neshama and soul, neshama and, and body. This is what Hashem wants, right now. So if this is what Hashem wants, when you say yeshekayach on small victories, what are you basically saying? You're saying Baruch Hashem. That's really what you're saying. You're saying, it's like you're on the team. Like, it's like, okay, it's good. Weiter, next, next small achievement, next mini war. But most of us are, are have already set up in our minds because of a Galut mentality that only when it's fully done, I can allow myself to take pride in Simchas. Like that Pramamish, when that person said to me at the airport, that statement, it felt like he was really saying to me, any small achievement that you have in Eretz Yisrael is about you and your gaiva. But it's not really about Hashem. It's about you trying to feel good. And I'm thinking about every chayal that ever lost his life so that you and I could sit here and live in Eretz Yisrael. And really? That was about him too? The, purple, the version of the Purple Heart? Like that, that, was, that, that was about him too. It's like Rav Kluger is giving here a mahalach of living in Eretz Yisrael like I've never seen by anybody, especially not from his world, because no one would ever talk like this. But he's basically saying that, you know, this is what we're here doing. Already la'avi l'kanit in the tzut or shal mashiach. Homework, till Tuesday. What's the homework? It's very simple. It's a very simple homework. You're going to have a hard time giving yourselves shkayachs because we're wired differently than what he said right now. We're still wired. A galut is still our wiring for, for some of us. So the, 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 the shirei bayit is, from every mitzvah that I do, what stops me from really saying yeshekoch? Or if I do say yeshekoch, what's the conversation? What's happening inside of me? Be aware of it. And, and it would be so beautiful. I haven't put any homework on anybody in so long because no one ever did it so you know it'd be so amazing if like one person can come to Shear next time and well actually if one person can come to Shear next time would be good but other than that to be able to just like report back and saying what took place when I said when I said when I decided after I do a mitzvah to say the most amazing thing is that the first moment you find yourselves out of here alone to say, I went to learn Torah. I started my week learning Torah this morning. Okay? Yeshakayach. <laughs>